I've just gotten this delightful device delivered. Uh, it's a thermal printer from AliExpress, as it were, uh, and I haven't really played around with it much, so I figured that I'd uh, just uh, record my first impressions of it. Uh, and But I have already bought some thermal paper for it, um, and right off the bat what I can tell you is that uh, the actual casing is not large enough to contain the uh, roll as is. I have to like unwind a lot and then uh, print some and then print some more so that it actually uh, rolls uh, well enough for the internal motor to handle the rotation. But that's a minor technicality. So uh, I'm just gonna power this on and uh, let's see that it works. Uh, right, so I've got 7 volts coming from the alligator clips from the power supply. Uh, there is a slight problem with the connectors on here, uh, namely the fact that they're um, really small. I don't really know what sort of form factor this is. Um, focus, please. Thank you. Um, so, uh, the uh, DuPont style connectors that I have on me don't really fit in all that well. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to have to do to get the uh, serial data connection on, uh, because I didn't think to buy a USB one, but then again I thought that maybe I could be doing something... Um, can you please focus on that? Thanks. Um, I, I could be doing something uh, with the Arduino with it, um, and now Upon further thinking, I think that it's best to leave the sort of image processing that's required for us to the computer. But anyway, the point being that this button advances the paper slightly, and I've just pressed a button on the underside, that one, uh, which prints out a character table. Um, uh, and. Yeah, the phone doesn't really want to focus on anything really. Uh, so we've got the character table. The top half of it is uh, standard ASCII. Uh, then we've got a couple of um, uh, Latin symbols. Uh, then uh, some currency symbols and quotes and stuff. Then some block printing. Uh, Greek alphabet for some reason. Although not complete Greek alphabet, I'm guessing that's down to well, we've got a lot of symbols here already. Uh, a font B that has something in it, uh, and also some info about the baud rate uh, 960. We'll take a note of that, uh, and the voltage that I have my power supply set to, which is actually correct. It's 7.5. One moment, I'm just uh, gonna adjust this real fast. Right now it's at. Uh, uh, 6.9 volts, and if I try and print this again, um, yeah, uh, it measures that pretty accurately, so that's a good start. Now, for interfacing purposes, I got a couple of these uh, uh, serial adapters uh, from AliExpress, as it were, um, which uh, are still in the actual blister pack. I'm not sure if that's called a blister pack, but the point being that it's got a couple of connections on here that we can solder on, uh, and a micro USB port that uh, goes to the computer so that you can uh, actually uh, uh, get some data into here and out of there. Uh, but I don't really know uh, how that works. Uh, I've got uh, a couple of pins on here. Um, focus not focusing. There you go. Uh, so we've got uh, ground and 5 volts and TX and RX. Uh, data transmit ready? I'm not sure. And 3 volts. Um, and that corresponds to some of these pins, uh, of which there are 5. Uh, there's the black and red one, uh, which are probably the uh, 0 and 5 or 3 volts. And then uh, three of these connections, and I have no idea which ones these are, so I'm just going to have to look at the data sheet for it. Uh, which is going to be troublesome because I don't really know where the data sheet can be found. 
Uh, certainly the uh, seller didn't have it, so maybe Adafruit has it. Uh, in any case, uh, this is like the first genuine use that I have for the oscilloscope that I bought, uh, which is going to be testing this thing, so I'm just going to uh, unpack it real quick, uh, and then I'm just going to bring in the laptop uh, so that I can send some data into this uh, and see uh, what comes out on this side. So we shall do that real quick. Alright, so I've got my laptop here. Uh, you'll note that this is not the one that I had previously, uh, which is going to give you a slight hint as to uh, the future videos on the channel. Uh, but anyway, uh, we've got our um, adapter here, and I've got a micro USB cable here. And if I plug this in, the little LED lights up, which is a good sign. Uh, and if we'll just look at the USB devices on here, uh, yeah, so that's the device that we've got here. It, it says on here, which you can't really read, but it says on here, yeah, it's not focusing. Yeah, uh, 340E or whatever, uh, and the uh, uh, screen has the 340 thing on here, so that's a good sign. Uh, and uh, if we look at the kernel messages, uh, yeah, it's uh, established a connection to a USB TTY, so that's a good start. Um, however, when I'm trying to connect to the uh, actual terminal that uh, they have on there, uh, it says it's a screen terminating, and I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I think that it has something to do with the uh, DTR pin we saw earlier, uh, because maybe that needs to be pulled high or low or whatever, or maybe this camera isn't focusing very well. I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna look that up real quick and I'll be back in a moment. Uh, so Wikipedia says that DTR stands for Data Terminal Ready uh, and it indicates the terminal is ready for communications and the modem may initiate the communications channel. Um, meaning that the signal is asserted by raising the voltage of the pin from negative to positive. Uh, and dropping the signal back to its negative state indicates to me that the communication session shall be terminated. Uh, meaning that we'll have to pull this uh, pin high in order for the um, actual thing to do anything, I suppose. I mean, I'm not sure whether or not that's actually the correct thing to do, um, but uh, let's just try it, I suppose. So what I'll do is I'll try to wedge this uh, piece of jumper cable from the 3 volt line, because I don't really want to fry it by sending it to 5 volts, and the DTR pin. Um, and so far it does not seem to be smoking, so that's a good start. Uh, so now with that wedged in there, uh, we go back to the uh, terminal emulator um, and run that again and no, it's still uh, shutting down right after I'm starting, so that's not very good, is it? I am getting a solid connection on here, I mean solid connection here is uh, very relative, but no, that doesn't appear to be the reason why or maybe it wants 5 volt uh, data. I'm not sure. Uh, let me read up on what TTL levels actually are. So TTL encompasses both 3.3 volt logic and 5 volt logic. However, the data sheet for the actual chip, which is written in Chinglish, uh, says that um, uh, it supports uh, both 5 volts and 3.3 volts. Uh, when using 5 volt source power, which we are, the VCC pin and the 5 uh, volt power and the E3 pin should connect with the coupling 
capacitor, which I think is the case on this. Uh, let's just uh, double check that. Um, Alright, so we have a capacitor on here. I don't know whether or not that's uh, the one that they're referring to, but I think it is because, like, where in the computer can you get 3 volts? Well, in your processor, presumably. Um, when using 3.3 power voltage, connects a Wii 3 with VCC, both input 3.3 power volts, and the other circuit voltage which connected with a uh, chip cannot exceed 3.3 volts. Uh, so, you cannot raise the uh, input voltage on any of the pins higher than the source voltage. However, since the source voltage is 5 volts, I think this should be fine. So, let's just try to hotwire this again, this time going from the plus 5 volt rail uh, to the uh, DTR pin. And it still isn't smoking, so that's good. Um, and now, with this precarious connection, we go on here. And no, it still does not want us to be doing anything with the data. And the, despite that the connection seems to be okay, so what am I missing? All right, I forgot because this is a new installation. I haven't put myself in the serial group yet, meaning that I have to have admin rights to actually write to the serial port. So now we have that, uh, and we grab the chip and uh, connect the uh, uh, oscilloscope on there. Uh, ground goes to ground. Um, like so. I am going to solder something into here at some point, uh, but I don't really want to bring out soldering gun while the laptop uh, is here. So, uh, the positive voltage goes to, let's go to TXT first, and now if we just, oops, that's a little loose, uh, now, if I type something on here, right, so we do have some sort of pulses going on here. Uh, let's just adjust the time base, um, uh, and maybe put to a uh, single pulse mode. For some reason, it seems to be that this thing is producing negative pulses. Uh, which is very odd. Um, so let's just adjust the trigger um, level uh, downwards somewhat. I'm not sure whether or not uh, the screen will go through well, but that's now adjusted. Uh, and yeah, that button gets stuck. So let's run it, and yeah, we have data coming in. Um, so that's a good start. So now what we'll do uh, is we'll solder some pins onto the uh, chip and get the, um, where did I put the printer? Uh, it's probably behind there, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so I'm just gonna try and connect uh, the well, first I'm gonna try and find the data sheet for the printer so that I can see which wires are which, and then we'll try and connect it up. Actually, just as I was reaching for the soldering iron, uh, a nice man at the door came to me and sold me a cardboard box. Uh, and inside the cardboard box are... Oh yeah, that's uh, way more flash drives than I had earlier. Um, anyway, that has absolutely nothing to do with this project, uh, just a uh, fun little fact. Um, so, while we're waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, uh, I've taken a look at the Adafruit website, uh, which sells printers that are quite similar to the one that I have here, uh, and the one that has the five cables uh, and the separate power cable, which seems to be my situation here, uh, they say that the green cable is the data input of the 
uh, printer, the yellow is the data output, uh, and the black is ground, and the red and blue don't need to be connected. Presumably those are the uh, additional serial pins. Uh, and that maps nicely to the fact these two are close together and this one is separate. Uh, and on this side, yeah, it's basically the same situation here. Uh, so I've separated myself the, uh, gr uh, the green and yellow cables and a separate... Uh, black-ish cable, uh, and I'm just gonna solder this onto here, so the green one is data input to the printer, which means it's the uh, transmitting pin on here, uh, and the other one is the receiving pin on here, so I'm hoping that that will work. Um, I'll try to leave myself enough space so that I can undo my mistakes if it doesn't, but I really do hope that it does work. Uh, I haven't actually uh, looked at this board very carefully. Uh, perhaps there's a 5 volt regulator under there that I miss. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty certain that one of those uh, transistor-ish things is the regulator, so I'm not sure. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, if if you fry this board, it's not much trouble, because I've got a lot of them uh, to replace them with. Well, saying that I don't really want to fry it, but this one is, uh, as of now, unique, so I don't really want to damage it. So, we'll see how that plays out. Right, uh, solder that into the place, and I've pushed the uh, other end into here. I'm not sure about the yellow cable, but I'm pretty sure about the green one, and that's the one that we care about. Uh, also, I've noticed that, uh, since it's a uh, thermal paper that we have here, uh, while the soldering iron is actually warm, uh, you can use the soldering iron stiff to draw something on here. So. Let's just try this. Yeah, that works. So, uh, now we just wait until the solenoid is cool enough so that we can put it away somewhere. Uh, and then I'll bring my laptop back in and we'll see what happens when you apply data to this thing. Right, so I've uh, gotten the laptop back into place and now I'm just uh, plugging everything into here. Um, I've already powered up the printer and the self-test still works, let's just see if that's still true. Yeah, that still prints. Uh, so, that can go over there. Uh, so now, I wanna try and plug uh, this thing into the computer uh, and see what happens with the printer as I turn on the uh, terminal emulator thingamajig, so, oh, I have to enter a password, one moment, password entered, and now we've got the blinking uh, cursor, and now we just type whatever, and see if anything happens. Actually, here's a thought. Uh, what I could do is try and uh, pipe uh, dev u random in there. Yeah, that might work. One moment, I'm just gonna load up a privileged console for this sort of thing. Yeah, I know this seems a tad extreme for the use case that we have. However, I'm just really interested to know what happened. Mm. So, the... Uh, board is transmitting data. Um, is the printer doing anything? I don't think it is. Yeah, I think it needs uh, a little bit more sort of intelligent input. Uh, so, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do right now is just a look at the uh, libraries that uh, Adafruit has published for this uh, and just see if there's like anything that's useful in there. So, let's just try that. Um, mm. 
Um, for the Raspberry Pi, yeah, sure. Um, because I would like uh, to have some uh, code that I can actually understand as opposed to the Arduino code. Uh, so, yeah, it is using the printer that I have here. Unfortunately, I can't open up the actual page because for some reason. Um, so, let's just uh, get that here. Mm. All right, sure, whatever. Um, so that's interesting. I'll uh, read that in a moment, uh, and I'll get back to you. All right, so so far it does seem to be want to be working because uh, nothing I do seems to have an impact on the. Uh, a printer doing anything. Also, there are a lot of um, errors uh, with uh, uh, byte to string conversion, uh, and I had to uh, edit the actual library itself to fix that. Uh, I don't think that that matters too much, as much as the fact that it doesn't seem to be working all that well. And certainly, the uh, serial module thinks it's sending data, because if I just position it right so. Uh, then you can see that it flashes every time that I try and do something, but the printer still does not want to do anything. And it's not like the printer isn't working or anything, because it's still printing the diagnostic page, but like, I don't know, I don't know why this keeps happening. Uh, I do want to find a data sheet for this though, so I'll just try and do that. For some reason, the uh, actual adapter board is uh, powering from the connections that I made to the printer. Uh, and I can prove that by shooting down the printer, and if I shut down the printer, the LED turns off. But I don't know what that means. Probably that I wired something stupid. Uh, however, uh, this uh, uh, page here uh, shows that. Uh, somebody was trying to uh, do something along those lines, and they have a printer that's just like mine. Uh, so, what I was thinking that maybe I could do the same thing that he did and uh, wired up to proper uh, uh, what's the name uh, breadboard terminals, so that I could uh, actually uh, see what I'm doing. So I'll just do that. Right, everything is in position. I've got the um, interface board on the right that's connected to the laptop. I'm not bringing that in the shop because it's way too crowded as it is. Um, and the laptop is sending um, messages of um, printing and feeding paper every second. Uh, on the right, I've got the... Uh, that was on the right. On the left, I've got the printer. Uh, which uh, oh um, which is connected so uh, fragilely that uh, the cables are shorting together. So I'm just gonna try and lever that up here. Um, one moment. Yeah, there are the cables connecting it to the power supply, um, and. Uh, both of these are connected onto the breadboard, uh, which I'm going to try and jumper using the jumper cables and measure using the multimeter. So I'm just going to get the multimeter here, um, preferably so that you can actually see uh, the readings. And I also got the uh, uh, soldering iron that's unplugged at the moment, uh, but and I'm really hoping that I won't have to plug that in again. So, um, first things, I'm gonna check if the black wire is actually the ground. That's the diode test. Mm. So, we're going from black here to that. Right, so black is ground, which means that we do need to connect that um, using this... Uh, 
brownish cable will connect uh, ground off this which is line number what you can't really see from up there um, this goes to ground and that okay so that's step one then uh, we need to try and figure out whether the green or the uh, yellow wires do anything. That I'm going to do with connecting the TXD cable from here to wherever. Right. So, that's not working. Absolutely amazing. So, all it took was two cables. Um, right, so... Let's just stop that from there, and I'm just gonna reposition everything so that the laptop is in shot now, and let's see if that works. Right, so we finally have uh, the printing functionality working, um, which is frankly amazing because I really thought that it would take less than that. Uh, so now uh, I'm just gonna try and do something with the printer object that I have here. Um, what are the options? Um, we've got underline, upside down. Let's try underlining it. Mm, underline on. Um, actually, here's a thought. I could um, get myself uh, fortunes. Mm. Uh, so that the uh, output is actually interesting. So let's just get that. Uh, mm. I'm defining a function that gives us a fortune. Mm. Mm. Let's just get a uh, OS dot p open in here that gets a fortune. And we get the output of that. So let's just try that real quick. Hmm. Interesting. Ah, right. It, it's because that I'm the root file, uh, not I'm the root user, and as such, I don't have access to the user games thing. So. Let's just try that. Uh, let's just try and fix that real quick. It's in USR Games Fortune. It's actually interesting that the root user is not supposed to be using games. Alright, so we've got the uh, fortunes coming in, and now if we try printer dot uh, print ln uh, of a fortune mm. and actually I should be feeding the paper shouldn't I really yeah um, so right so we've got the text being underlined now Um, uh, let's just see what other options are there. I saw something about uh, text being upside down. Let's try that. Upside down on. And... No, that doesn't seem to be working all that well. Alright, um... What other options are there? Um, strike, oh, that probably works. Um, up down mask is probably reverse. 
uh, related to that. Uh, actually, I'm interested in how uh, we could print um, barcodes. Um, so I'm just trying to figure this one out because I don't really want to go to the documentation to figure all this out. So maybe we could turn on double height for a moment. Mm, double height on. Yeah, that works. Mm, um, and double width maybe. Width. Oops. Typos. Uh, mm, I D T H. Mm. So now we have large text. Let's just turn all of these off. Um, and double height also off. And getting back to here. Yeah, that works. Um, actually, here's a thought. Uh, what if I just pipe um, something into the uh, uh, terminal for this? Uh, so if I do like man, uh, whatever, mm, uh, what's a short manual? LS maybe. Mm, well, it's not really that short, but on the other hand, or still gonna try it. Focus. Thank you. Um, uh, and that goes to T into the dev TTY USB one. Hmm. Right. So we've got some text coming out. Right, so I've gotten myself uh, a manual for the ls command right here. Um, uh, actually, did it format it? Um, well, it's uh, alright, I suppose. Um, well, so there's that. Uh, now, I want to try and print graphics on it, uh, and to do that I shall look at the uh, code once again. Uh, I'll read the library code, uh, and I want to see how to do... Uh, first I want to see how to do barcodes, because apparently there's native support for barcodes. Uh, and then I'm gonna try and uh, figure out how to do like arbitrary graphics. So I'll try and figure that out and I'll be with you in a moment. I've actually found a demo on the repository. Uh, that's the printer test file. Uh, and I've hacked the Android Thermal library a little bit so it doesn't delay because Apparently it did want to delay a lot, and I don't know why, because even without any sort of delays, the uh, printer works absolutely fine. Well, except that the barcodes work, but the graphics does not. Like you can see in the background, there are some day attempts. Uh, let's just try this again so that you can see it. So, first off, it goes quite well, uh, but the graphics thing... Um, it tries to do something um, with the graphics on here but doesn't really succeed and then it's just some random uh, characters that it's trying to use for control and then the add fruits symbol so yeah really I do suggest that you check them out because they do libraries for these sort of things even if you buy the um, actual hardware not from them you can uh, download it and use it for your projects, so uh, do consider checking it out. I'll put a link in the description for the uh, download for this library. Mm, but yeah, so basically that's the uh, situation that I have at the moment with the printer, and 
personally I think this is a success because like I didn't expect uh, this to work uh, quite as well as it did so yeah basically the main uh, points uh, have been achieved that I can now uh, get a minimal working uh, example of this uh, and actually because it's connected to a computer uh, I can actually like just type something into the terminal and it shows up on there meaning that like uh, let's just cat something to the dev tty usb1 and now whatever I type I think yeah it appears on there uh, well except for some weird symbols that I don't really want to understand wait uh, is that like the uh, mm, new line symbol that appears like the dot y thing I'm not sure um, but whatever it is uh, you can type whatever uh, and it shows up on here which to me is x x so printer's working uh, I've just been playing around with this and I found out that the line is actually 32 characters long uh, which means that I can now uh, wrap uh, text uh, properly so that it fits on a line um, so let's just uh, do that real quick um, I'm just gonna set up an infinite loop uh, of 0 0.3 seconds delay uh, during which we'll uh, print a random fortune and just see the uh, speed at which it prints and I think I'll round the video up at this point because as delightful as this thing is I think that this video has gone for long enough already also the camera still does not want to focus on anything.